when you think about it from a sort of purely physical, intellectual perspective, existence is a very weird thing. <laughs> Here we are in this world, born with seemingly no memory of anything before that moment. And we start to become aware of things, we grow up, we find ourselves in a family and then we study a little bit of science and we realise that we're on this, on this rock that's revolving around a ball of fire in the blackness of space. Space that is expanding at an ever increasing rate into infinity <laughs> and it just seems to be a very odd state of affairs <laughs> what's going on and then there's on on behind our shoulder is the uh, the looming specter of death which according to mainstream scientific opinion is just going to be the end of everything where we return to the blackness that we came from at birth and uh, so from that perspective no wonder so many people end up with quite a nihilistic philosophy on life because that can be a quite that, that idea can be quite depressing really that we're only here for this very short time and that's it forever and then there's all those fears around an eternity of nothingness which I'm, so many of us uh, ponder at times and uh, I'm sure get into uh, Remember, I've had uh, a good few panic attacks about that kind of thing in the past. But there is a different point of view, which can only really come around when we come about, when we get to a point where we can spend certain amounts of time not in our mind. And we can let go of our thoughts and just be present, just, just be and observe the world without constantly thinking and analysing and putting labels on things. But we just watch and take everything in. And when you're in that state, you may start to notice that, you may start to notice things on a bit more of a human level rather than at this purely physical kind of cosmological level you may start to see that in very simple terms, everybody's just trying to be happy. They're trying to find a way to be happy and not always, not always consciously, mostly subconsciously, but we're all trying to be happy. And by making so that the level of happiness that we gain is very much related to the quality of our choices that we make in life. If we make fearful, self-centered, anxiety-driven, anger-driven, any negative emotion-driven choices that generally produces negative circumstances in life. We get a negative mirror back at us, which may, may, can often make us feel even worse, which leads to more bad choices. And it gets into kind of like a, a spiral, a downward spiral. And on the other side of things, people who are enjoying their lives, who feel happy and fulfilled and they have great relationships and they, wealth just seems to come to them, they don't need to really try. People who are creative and innovative. These kinds of people generally make choices that are not from that self-centred, fearful place, but from a kind of open, curious, fearless kind of place where they are exploring the world in a carefree, kind of childlike but responsible way. A considered way where they still use their mind to analyse things, but they, they go for things if they get that feeling, that urge. And they get good feedback and that makes them want to carry on making those choices. So they do and their lives continue to, to be in this, uh, continue to get positive feelings and results. And when looking at th things from this kind of perspective, you start to see that the world around us seems to be designed quite well for trying to guide us in this direction of making better choices because of this feedback effect that we get from our choices. Making those bad choices kinds of, kind of pushes us into a corner, a corner that doesn't feel nice and 
is trying to get us to change, get us to move away from those bad choices. So if this is depression, then that comes as those depressive feelings. And then we end up shutting ourselves away in the house, not seeing anybody. And that makes us feel even worse because we feel even more apart from everything and not part of a family or a community or of relationships. And when we're in that scenario, our body often starts to deteriorate physically. So we feel more ill. We have less energy. Again, bringing us down, pulling us down. It's really trying to sort of shake us and say that this is not the right way. You need to sort of ch change the way you're, change what you're doing, change the way you're being, change your choices. And when you, when you look around at different people, we're all born in a different family, unless you're a brother or a sister, but we're all born in a very unique set of circumstances with a certain family in a certain place in the world that has its own culture and has its own climate and environmental conditions and has its own different challenges in terms of opportunities for different genders and different races and different uh, creeds and religions and that kind of thing. And in a different country, which has its own different traditions and ways of doing things, we're all presented with a very unique challenge, a very different challenge, which challenges us in different ways, which makes it more, again, more conducive for us to grow and make, make better choices. Most of us also have a sexual instinct, which comes with these human bodies, which kind of draws us to other people, magnetically pulls people together, in which they spend time, long amounts of time with each other in relationships, where you get to know that person at a very deep level. You see all of their fears, all of their loves, all of their desires, all of their insecurities, all of their secrets, or most of their secrets maybe. And that kind of dynamic is very good at when somebody else can see you in such a sort of naked and bare way. It has a great effect of sort of pushing us in this direction again of making better choices because it makes us face all of those insecurities that are leading us to make bad choices. Relationships are one of the best things in life for spiritual growth because they, they shine a light on all of those parts of ourselves that we, for the most part we are trying to ignore and run away from. We also have the economic challenges of life when most of us have to find a way, when we become adult, of making money to survive, to buy food and clothes and somewhere to live, and a car maybe. And this, again, is a, a very good way of uncovering all of our deepest fears and insecurities because it can be a challenging thing to do that. We've got to put ourselves out there in the world. We've got to go for interviews. We've got to get a job and work with other people or the people we may not get along with who trigger us in different ways. All very good ways of helping us grow. And if you're the kind of person who gets to a point in life where you are consciously on this journey of trying to grow and better yourself and improve in different ways, the more you become aware of yourself at that deeper emotional, intuitive, spiritual level, you, st you sometimes start to have quite strange experiences, kind of like paranormal experiences or metaphysical experiences like lucid dreams or out-of-body experiences, astral projection if you prefer that term. Some people take things like psychedelics and they have experiences which are totally outside of the realm of current scientific understanding. They are, they go on trips, as they're called, where they experience things that are impossible from a mechanistic, physical point of view. They see things that they can't, that you, it's inexplainable in a purely physical world. Some people have quite, have strange paranormal kind of um, premonition ex experiences where they will have a dream or they'll just suddenly have this feeling that something's going to happen and then it does happen. And they don't have an explanation for that. And it makes them start to question things a little more. Is this, is this idea of birth, death being the beginning and end of everything, is that really right? Or is there something more to life? Some people 
have things called near-death experiences where during some kind of accident or medical emergency, they tempor their body temporarily dies, but their consciousness does not. And they are fully aware of what's going on, even though their body is completely dead, their heart's not beating, they're not breathing, there's no brainwave activity. There's no way that that body can produce the consciousness, which is the way that science sees it at the moment, but yet they are still experiencing. There are no end of documented examples of this, even with the doctors themselves confirming afterwards when they spoke to the patient that yes, the things they were explaining were actually happening in that operating room at the time when this person was dead. And there's no explanation from that from the physical perspective. Again, people begin to question things. Is this, is there something more to this? Um, and then when, like I said, when you begin to see it from this other point of view of looking at life as a way to grow and change and become more than we, we were before, it starts to make even more sense when you look back at religions from the past or religions of the present. And even though there is a lot wrong with religions and they, they have a lot of dogma and a lot of illogicalities, if you look at the general message of most religions, they're all trying to say the same thing. It's all really a message of self-improvement. It's one of learning to love, like love thy neighbour. Um, don't do anything to anybody else that you wouldn't want done to yourself. Be kind, be caring, think about others. Don't make it all about yourself. <laughs> it's, uh, it starts to become quite blindingly obvious, but it doesn't. you can't get to this blindingly obvious, <laughs> obvious point until you start to get out of that mind, get out of that purely intellectual way of seeing the world. I'm not saying you have to throw away the intellect altogether. The intellect is a fabulous tool that I use all the time still now, but just selectively, because we cannot see the bigger picture when we are focusing down on specific things and we're constantly analysing, which is what the brain does, which is what the mind and the intellect does. When you let go of the mind and the intellect for a second, or hopefully longer than a second, you start to see all things, not just these few specific things. You can see things from an unbiased perspective. You can even start to receive information from beyond yourself, like things like premonitions. This is one reason why most, whether they're atheists or just hard scientists who are have this opinion that the world is physical, the reason many of those people don't have these kind of metaphysical experiences and things like premonitions and out-of-body experiences or lucid dreams is because they are not open to it. <laughs> they are stuck in the mind. They, they, they're sure it's impossible. They're not connected to their emotional, intuitive self down here at the heart and the gut level. They're living up here and you can't experience the deeper spiritual reality of yourself whilst you're living up there. As well as all these things at the kind of human level that I've just explained, we also start to see things like science and cosmology from a different perspective. We can see that the current laws of, well not laws, I should say, the current prevailing theories of physics are not complete and they're not complete by any means. And there's also lots of unanswered questions still, very fundamental unanswered questions. Not only that, but the main theories of physics, which are quantum mechanics and relativity, are extremely reliant upon a single observer. A conscious observer is, is a vital part of these theories, and without it, you cannot explain the universe in a way that makes any kind of scientific sense. So when you really do question things and you do look deeply with a completely unbiased mind, and when you do it from a place that is not pure intellect, you start to see that there is a very good chance that there is much more to life than just this born life, death, that's it. It seems that us, whatever we are, whether it's spiritual beings or something else, we are we are a central part of this thing. We exist beyond what we think of as the physical. We are, we are something else. We are not a product of our brain. Our consciousness is independent. It's fundamental. It's more fundamental than matter. This universe is here for us. It's designed for us to grow. Look at all those examples I gave. It's perfectly designed 
for us to learn to make better choices. It's like a school. We're here to learn. And the more we learn, the more we see that we are in control, really. We have the power to make those good choices and to create a great life for ourselves, to an enjoyable experience, a fulfilling, joyful, happy <laughs> one where we can be creative and innovative and build things and have fun and equally we can create the opposite the we start to sort of realize that our destiny is in our own hands and it can go either way so then meaning in existence begins to take on a completely different meaning it can shift from that kind of quite nihilistic one that goes quite well with the physical mechanistic theory of the universe to one of kind of curiosity and optimism and a an excitement to explore what seems to be an array of near infinite possibilities we can create whatever we like and it's all within our own hands in this life and then whatever we go on to after this life Maybe we can even get to the point where we have to where we stop coming back to places like this because we've learned enough lessons now. We don't need to keep coming and getting into these situations that push us in the direction of good choices. Who knows where we go after that? That's a fun thing to imagine. That adds more to the meaning or more to the mystery. It's just so difficult to get to this point, to see this perspective and to truly feel it and not just think it and hope it, but to know it down here at the gut. To get there, we have to live from the gut and from the heart and learn to get out of this mind, which is in, in many ways great, but also in many ways very restrictive. 